In the last session, we looked at Isaiah 59 verse 2, which says, But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. We see from the scripture that sin separates us from God. I explained that most of the time, disease can be traced back to sin and therefore separation on one of the following three levels separation from God, separation from yourself, or separation from others. These are the three main roots or sin issues that cause most of disease known to mankind and which manifest through the human body in various different ways. The foundation of the kingdom of God is relationship. So the foundation of Satan's attack is to destroy your relationship with God, yourself, and others. In session 6, I spoke about being separated from yourself and the diseases that come from that. Now I'd like to talk about what it means to be separated from others. You can be separated from others through broken relationships, envy, jealousy, long-term anger, rage, resentment, hatred, bitterness, and unforgiveness. When you think of somebody that has wronged you, do you feel that high-octane ping go off on inside of you? Well, anger, rage, and resentment can lead to aneurysms, hemorrhoids, and varicose veins. An aneurysm is basically an abnormal weakening in the walls of the arteries that causes, the, causes them to bulge or balloon outwards. Varicose veins and hemorrhoids are basically the same thing, but in the veins. An aneurysm is dangerous because it can eventually burst or rupture. Whatever goes on in your thought life, your brain converts into a physical reaction. So as you are exploding with anger in your thought life, your body will respond by literally exploding physically in your lifetime. Ephesians 4 verse 26 says, When angry, do not sin. Do not ever let your wrath, your exasperation, your fury or indignation last until the sun goes down. God is saying that if you don't deal with that issue by releasing and forgiving, you're going to have disease beginning in your body by morning. We need to start taking God's word seriously. We are finding that people who are filled with jealousy and envy are getting osteoporosis, which is deterioration and subsequent weakening of the bones. This goes right along with the warning in the word, in Proverbs 14 verse 30, which says, A calm and undisturbed mind and heart are the life and health of the body, but envy, jealousy and wrath are like rottenness of the bones. This is a true story which Henry Wright told about a 60-year-old Jewish lady from New Jersey in America who had severe osteoporosis. It had started in her 30s, and by her early 40s, it was in its advanced stages. She had a great amount of jealousy and envy that came out of tragic life circumstances. Her bone scans revealed that her osteoporosis was getting progressively more severe. So she contacted the Ministry of Henry Wright for help. His staff explained to her over the telephone that her osteoporosis was a result of jealousy and envy upstream in her thought life, and if she wanted to get healed, she would have to deal with that thorn tree in her brain. So she went before God and she repented for the sin of jealousy and envy that had been in her heart all of those years. 
The bone scan at her next follow-up visit at the doctor revealed no evidence of osteoporosis. She had been totally healed. Now what makes this testimony incredibly significant is that she was on the drug prednisone. Prednisone has a side effect of decreasing the amount of bone tissue. In other words, it will worsen the osteoporosis. So you have very little chance of recovering from osteoporosis if you are taking prednisone. She was still taking this drug when she went back to her doctor for her next bone scan. When she went for her test results, the doctor said to her, I don't know what's happened to you. I've been your doctor for years, and I've been in this business for years. But all osteoporosis has been stopped. You see, the doctor was astounded because osteoporosis is considered incurable in the medical field. Also, osteoporosis is known to be a progressive disease that gets worse over time. The doctor went on to say to her, not only has the osteoporosis been stopped, but in all bone scan areas throughout the structure of your bones, you have an average bone density of 15 to 18 percent. Now, bone density of 15 to 18 percent is equivalent to the bone density of a 30-year-old woman. And remember, in the beginning of the story, I told you she was 60 years old. In Psalm 103 verse 5, it says that God will renew our youth like the eagles, strong, overcoming, and soaring. And it happened to her when she applied the principles of his word. Now I'd like to discuss a few points about cancer with you in terms of how and why it develops from a medical and biblical perspective. If you have cancer, I recommend that you get my book because I've explained the different types of cancer in significantly more detail there. I believe that this knowledge and insight, when applied to your life, will help you to overcome cancer because no disease is incurable when God's conditions for healing are met. I explained in session 3 that your immune system is the army of cells in your body that protect you from getting sick. Your immune system will remove or kill harmful things in your blood and body tissues, for example viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungus and cancer cells. According to the American Medical Association, the average person develops a cancer cell that floats around in their bloodstream about 200 times in their lifetime. In other words, the average person has the potential to develop cancer at least 200 times in their life. But normally these cancer cells are not able to develop into a tumor because they are killed off by the immune system. Remember I spoke about interleukin-2, which is a special cell that is part of the immune system. This cell is like a policeman. It patrols around the body, checking all of the cells, and it's able to recognize harmful substances like cancer, viruses, and bacteria by the foreign proteins on their cell wall. When the policeman detects these cancer cells, he will alert the other cells of the immune system, and CD8 killer T cells will then come and destroy those cancer cells, therefore eliminating them in their early state of tumor formation before full-blown cancer develops. The bottom line is that when a person has a strong, healthy immune system, cancer just does not happen. According to the American Medical Association, if a cancer cell is present in the bloodstream or tissues and the person has a healthy immune system, the probability of cancer developing is 1 in 1 million. And that's excellent. But there are things that will interfere with your immune system serving you as God designed it to. For example, during stage 2 and 3 of stress, the high levels of the stress hormone cortisol will directly destroy various cells of the immune system and it will also prevent the formation of new cells. Cortisol also damages the policeman into leukin 2 so that he is no longer able to recognize the cancer cells as harmful substances. Therefore, instead of alerting the killer cells of the immune system to destroy these harmful cancer cells, he says, Hello, cancer. How nice to see you. Welcome to the body. Thank you for coming. Have a nice day. And even if the policeman alerted the CD8 killer T cells about the presence of cancer, 
the high levels of cortisol have also distorted the DNA of the killer cells. And as a result, the killer cells are weakened and less effective in destroying the cancer. When the immune system is weakened, the chances of a cancer cell attaching to the body tissue and developing into a tumor and full-blown cancer is very, very probable. This is a quote from Discovery Health dated August 21, 2000. The stress hormone is linked to earlier death in women with breast cancer. Abnormal fluctuations in the stress hormone cortisol are linked to a decreased survival time with advanced breast cancer. An article was written in Discover magazine by Dr. Steven Rosenberg, who is the head of the National Cancer Institute in America. The title of the article was, I have seen cancers disappear. The article was a case report about a man who had advanced cancer of the colon. He initially went in for surgery for tumors in his colon to be removed. But when the surgeons cut him open in theater, they saw a hard malignant tumor on his stomach that had grown into his liver and had metastasized or spread to his lymph nodes. So they just closed him up, realizing that it was not possible to surgically remove the tumor, and unfortunately there was nothing further that they could do to help him. So they, let, they literally sent him home to die. Twelve years later, this man ended up in a consultation with Dr. Rosenberg, complaining of abdominal pain. After examining him, Dr. Ro Rosenberg realized that he needed to have an operation to have his gallbladder removed. But there was a very perplexing question from his case history. Why was this man still alive? He should have died 12 years ago. Dr. Rosenberg performed the gallbladder operation at the Veterans Hospital in West Roxbury in Massachusetts in America. When the surgeons opened him up, all they saw was soft, pink, healthy tissue. There was no trace of cancer anywhere in his abdominal cavity. The cancer had disappeared like it was never there. Something happened in that man's life that had caused his immune system to strengthen. So this inspired Dr. Rosenberg to study more about the role of the immune system in cancer. You see, God has created your immune system to be so strong that a cancer cell or tumor of any size, no matter how far it is spread, can be totally destroyed by the CD8 T killer cells. But there is a condition. You have got to change your way of thinking so that your body is no longer in stage 2 and 3 of stress, where there are high levels of cortisol that weaken your immune system. Now, what thinking habits will put your body into stage 2 and 3 of stress thereby increasing your risk of cancer. While you already know from session 3 that fear, anxiety and stress will put your body into a toxic state of stage 2 and 3 of stress. Another big one I mentioned is strife. Remember I spoke about James 3 verse 16 which says, Where there is strife, there is every evil work. Strife can put your body into a toxic state of stress which will not only increase the risk of cancer, but it opens the door to over a hundred incurable diseases. That is why I cannot stress it enough to you. If you want to live long and enjoy divine health, keep the strife out of your life. Keep the strife out of your life. And that includes gossip. Out of strife and the breakdown in relationships that it causes, comes the toxic thinking habit of bitterness and unforgiveness, which is the primary spiritual root behind many cancers. According to the experience of Henry Wright, at least 30% of all cancer in people that he has dealt with have a, is a result of a breach in relationship. In session four, when I spoke about allergies and how allergies can be caused by a broken heart or a broken spirit, we looked at Proverbs 17 verse 22 in depth. A happy heart is good medicine, and a cheerful mind works healing, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Cancer is also commonly caused by a genetically inherited defect in the genes. 
but you only get the cancer sometime later in life, such as in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, or even in your 80s. Now this genetic defect can be triggered to cause the cancer by a stressful life event. And an example of such a stressful life event is when somebody really breaks our heart. When we are injured emotionally, when we are rejected, jilted, abandoned, victimized, humiliated, abused, and so on, our spirit is broken. Remember the cells of your immune system are made in your bones, in the bone marrow. So when you have a broken spirit or a broken heart, there are high levels of cortisol, and cortisol destroys the cells of the immune system, thus literally drying the bones. You now know that when your immune system is damaged or weakened, you are at great, great risk of developing cancer. People with cancer often have a poor ability to develop and maintain meaningful long-term relationships without fear. When we have a broken heart, fear, unforgiveness and bitterness have the potential to come in. People with cancer often have a marked inability to, to forgive and a tendency to hold on to resentment and bitterness. Now let's talk about the fear of cancer, because cancer is one of the most greatly feared words in medicine. The reason is because cancer is associated with a death sentence. An article from the New England Journal of Medicine said the following, Unfortunately, when it comes to cancer, American society is far from rational. We are possessed with fear, but it is not only a matter of simple fear. American cancer phobia, in brief, is a disease as serious to society as cancer is to the individual and more morally devastating. In the Bible, Job said, for the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. With the diagnosis of cancer comes the fear of death. Fear compounds the problem and the devil knows it. As you know, fear will put your body into a toxic state of stage 2 and 3 of stress. This leads to high levels of cortisol which will weaken your immune system's ability to fight cancer. Fear can set in motion the very thing that we are afraid of. So we need to be very careful of the fear of cancer. Environmental factors can be involved in the development of cancer. For example, excessive exposure to radiation or ingestion of carcinogens through cigarette smoke. When you smoke, you are opening the door to the spirit of death because you are bringing into your body a chemical that can help produce cancer. Now, while there are external chemicals that cause toxicity, it is also important to understand that we can experience toxicity internally. The wall surrounding a body cell is semi-permeable. In other words, it acts like a filter. It allows for the diffusion of oxygen and nutrients and other things that the body cell needs to diffuse into the cell. And it also allows for the removal of waste out of the cell. You see, God designed your body to be able to cleanse itself of toxins. Jesus said, one of the signs accompanying those who believe is that even if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. When you are in right relationship with God, and there is no fear, unforgiveness and bitterness in your thought life, your body cleanses itself of toxins. Now, I'm not implying that you can do something irresponsible, such as drink a bottle of poison. I'm talking about a normal lifestyle and things that you are normally exposed to in your environment. But during stage 2 and 3 of stress, the high levels of the stress hormones will cause those cell walls to become stiff and rigid. As a result, the body wall cannot filter substances properly. So the things that the body cell needs, like oxygen and, and nutrients, cannot diffuse into the cell efficiently. Also, there's a buildup of waste products inside the cell that cannot diffuse out. So now the body cells are not able to cleanse themselves as they were designed to. The retention of toxins and waste products inside the cell will damage what is called anti-oncogenes. You see, God took into account that body cells will go through wear and tear in life. 
So he built in anti-oncogenes into the body cells as a safety mechanism. Anti-oncogenes are the genes that prevent the cell from becoming cancerous. For example, when the DNA in that cell gets damaged through wear and tear. So when the anti-oncogenes are damaged by the buildup of toxins and waste products inside the cell, this will make the person susceptible to getting cancer. Bitterness is the primary spiritual root that causes or accelerates internal toxicity in cells. Bitterness is a deadly poison. There's a saying about bitterness, that bitterness is like drinking a bottle of poison and hoping that the other person will die. Remember I explained that the hypothalamus is the area in the brain that is the mind-body connection. It translates everything that is going on in your thought life into a physical reaction. There is a lot of truth in the old saying, bitterness eats at you like cancer. The toxic stronghold or thorn tree of bitterness in your brain will increase the levels of the stress hormone cortisol. This causes the cell walls to become rigid which leads to the accumulation of toxins in your body cells. And the toxins, like battery acid, will literally eat away and destroy the anti-oncogenes. When the anti-oncogenes are destroyed, the cell becomes cancerous. Bitterness of some form is behind most cancers. This can involve long-term, lingering, festering bitterness against others, against yourself, or even against God. You see, when you have bitterness, you have fear. When you have a breakdown in relationship with somebody, you can deny it all you want, but it is eating at you left, right and center. And this bitterness does not only affect you and the specific person where it came in, but it affects your relationship with everybody else. This is because you are projecting all the fear of rejection and disappointment into everybody that you come into contact with. When bitterness eats at you in your thoughts, you end up with cancer cells that eat away at your body. As it is in the spirit, so it is in the physical. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so does he become. You may have heard of Dr. Don Colbert. He often writes articles in the Joyce Meyer magazine. He also appears on the TV and TV station, and he's also worked in the ministry of Henry Wright. This is a quote by Dr. Colbert from CBN, dated 2nd of July, 2001. Nothing strikes fear more in a patient than the diagnosis of cancer. Let me say that yes, Nutrition, vitamins, and lifestyle changes are critically important in preventing cancer and helping us through cancer. But before we discuss nutrition, let's look at deadly emotions. Many times, cancer is associated with bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, hatred, and especially guilt and shame. These emotions will actually cause the body to produce toxic material They increase cortisol levels, which in turn weaken the immune system and allow cancer to begin to form in the body. This is a testimony of a pastor's wife from a book that was written by Dr. Neil Anderson and Dr. Michael Jacobson. In this testimony, I want to show you why and how God healed her instantly and nobody prayed for her. I also want to show you how the body defeats itself of cancer by itself without medicine or nutrition or chemotherapy. She was a pastor's wife from Ohio in America. She had stage 4 terminal breast cancer which had metastasized to her entire body. It was terminal and fatal. There was nothing further that the doctors could do for her. There was no hope. Had she been prayed for? Oh yes, of course, she was the pastor's wife. The whole church was probably praying for her. Had she been healed? No. Why hadn't she been healed? The reason is that Satan still had a legal right to her life because she had unforgiveness and bitterness in her heart. She didn't know that Satan had a legal right to her life 
because nobody had told her or discipled her in the toxic thought patterns behind cancer. This is her testimony. If you were to ask her, Candice would say that the most powerful physical healing agent available is not a drug. It is a sound, healthy, spiritual mind and heart. As a fifth-year-old pastor's wife, Candice was given the devastating diagnosis of metastatic breast cancer. By the time it was discovered, the disease had already spread through her body and she was given only a few months to live. In response to her diagnosis, she and her husband sought the counsel of a Georgia pastor, Henry Wright, whose ministry orientation is in identifying spiritual factors in the cause of disease. During the conversation, Candice became aware of the possibility that bitterness towards another woman had weakened her immune system and made her more vulnerable to cancer. So shortly thereafter, she sought forgiveness and was reconciled in her relationship with the woman from whom she had been estranged. Her cancer has spontaneously regressed, despite the fact that she has never changed her diet, has never had surgery, and has never taken any medication. It's been at least 10 years now. She still has no symptoms, and she feels great. Pastor Henry Wright did not pray for her, when she and her husband called him. He discipled her with the knowledge that I am sharing with you right now from the Word of God and medical science. He enabled her to recognize the roots behind her disease so that she could take responsibility and repent to God. After she repented to God for her bitterness and unforgiveness, she went to the woman and made peace. Did God forgive her? Yes. God delivered her of all her fears, and bitterness and, un and unforgiveness no longer dominated her thought life. From a medical perspective, Candice grew a healthy, lush tree of forgiveness in her brain. That lush tree produced chemicals that flowed through the thorn tree of bitterness and unforgiveness and removed those thorns. So that thorn tree no longer produced the toxic chemicals which caused stage 2 and 3 of stress. Because the stage 2 and 3 stress reaction was stopped, the excessive productions of the stress hormone cortisol was stopped. So now there was no cortisol present to destroy her immune system. The cells of her immune system began to remultiply and come back to full strength. The policeman interleukin 2 was able to heal and could now recognize the cancer. And her immune system began to serve her on behalf of God. The policemen and killer cells identified and killed every cancer cell in her body. They killed that cancer everywhere it had spread and ate every bit of it until it was gone. And nobody prayed for her. That is how people with terminal cancer that had metastasized everywhere and who were literally on death's doorstep have totally recovered through simply sorting out their toxic thought life. This is happening all over the world as people are beginning to understand what God and medical science is saying. Are you now beginning to understand why I am serious and very realistic about the title of this DVD series, which is that no disease is incurable? So long as the pastor's wife stays in forgiveness, she'll never get cancer again, and she hasn't. Here is another case history of cancer. My name is Janet. I was diagnosed with stage 3 uterine cancer. I had an emergency hysterectomy operation. This is where the uterus or the womb is removed surgically. However, the malignant tumor was still present. My doctor advised chemotherapy treatment, so I agreed to the first two. I lost my hair at 25 pounds and felt awful. I was scared to go on with six more treatments because I didn't know how I could go on working as a real estate broker. Then things began to happen. A real estate listing came my way. I got a second call from another broker whose customer gave full price. I arranged to meet the broker to read the contract papers and then came a surprise. 
After our meeting, I asked if he could stay for a while and chat with my husband and me. I had never met this man before and I rarely discuss personal matters with strangers, but I felt close to him and told him my story. He listened patiently and then revealed that he had considerable experience in ministering at the VA hospital and hospice and that he understood my concern. When I asked him what to do, he said that he couldn't really help me, but he had a booklet that tells you how to help yourself. This is a booklet called New Insights into Cancer that was written by Henry Wright. I read it the same evening twice. That was Wednesday. I began to realize the importance of forgiving others and that I had to get rid, rid of the bitterness that I had towards my ex-son-in-law. It was like a light bulb went off in my head. I had to forgive him and I did. It happened in the driveway of my home just before he left my 11-year-old grandson to visit me the very next day, which was Thursday. They were both in shock when I told them I was sorry and that I loved him. We both cried as we hugged each other. This was on Thursday, the day after I read the cancer booklet. The next day, Friday, I went to my appointment for the chemotherapy treatment and to the surprise of both my oncologist and my radiologist, the cancer had completely disappeared. I now know that bitterness and unforgiveness were the cause of my cancer, but most important is that God heard my heart asking him to forgive me for judging someone else. I call it a matter of divine intervention of a God who loves me. I praise him and worship him. He has changed my life forever. When she repented and got rid of the bitterness and unforgiveness in her thought life, God actually took that tumor out of her body overnight. And by the way, nobody prayed for her. Now there is nothing wrong with praying for healing, but what I am simply pointing out to you is that when you repent and meet God's conditions for healing, you will get healed anyway, because the blessings of the first 14 verses of Deuteronomy 28 will automatically overtake you. I hope to lay this on your heart, because you have the chance to defeat cancer forever in your family. I encourage you to teach this to your children, and teach it to your grandchildren. Teach it, teach it, teach it, teach it. Teach it, because this is knowledge straight off the hot plate of heaven to help you defeat your enemy. These principles that I am sharing with you for the healing of cancer are the same principles that when applied to your life will prevent cancer. This is a quote from Charles R. Shaw, Professor of Bio Biology and the Chief of the Medical Genetics Section at the University of Texas in, at the Tumor Institute in Houston. The goal is prevention of cancer. Cancer specialists have long recognized that this is the best approach to the control of cancer. One often hears the question, do you think we'll come up with a cure for cancer soon? Well, I've just told you what the cure for most cancers is. Deal with that thorn tree of unforgiveness and bitterness in your brain. But carrying on with the professor's quote, the more relevant question is, do you think we'll come up with a prevention of cancer soon? And my answer to the latter question is, the secret to the prevention of cancer lies within eradicating unforgiveness and bitterness from your thought life and get the strife out of your life. Understanding what causes cancer in terms of the physical and spiritual dynamics behind it is the primary route to prevent it. For all of you ladies, I'm about to share with you the biggest secret to the preventing and healing of breast cancer that has ever hit this planet. And I know that it is true because so many females across the world are being healed. Breast cancer is caused by long-term festering bitterness, resentment and strife between the woman with breast cancer and another woman. Remember that bitterness can lead to the retention of toxins in your body cells and those toxins will destroy the anti-oncogenes. The cells in the female that are targeted is the breast tissue 
because the breasts are the nurturing aspect of the female. So when we get a female that is no longer nurturing and is into a lot of strife, with bitterness festering within her, the anti-oncogenes in the cells in her breast are destroyed and she gets breast cancer. Henry Wright initially saw the connection between breast cancer and bitterness between the woman with breast cancer and another female just through ministering to thousands of women with breast cancer. He got involved in their lives and he found that all of them had bitterness towards their mother, mother-in-law or sister or some other female. There were two doctors, one in Taiwan and one in Denver, Colorado, who began to collaborate as Christian doctors. At first they were skeptical about Henry Wright's teaching because he is a pastor. So these two doctors began to go back and look at their case histories to see if there really was a connection in breast cancer between the woman with the disease and bitterness and strife towards another woman. And they came to a startling observation. If the cysts or the tumors appear in the left breast, it is an indicator of unresolved bitterness between the female with the disease and another female who is a blood relative. That would be a mother or sister or grandmother or aunt. If the tumors or cysts appear in the right breast, it's an indicator of bitterness between the female with the disease and a non-blood relative mother-in-law at the top of the list, or it could involve a woman in the workplace or a woman at church. If the tumors appear in both breasts, it's an indicator of unresolved bitterness between the woman with the disease and both sides, blood relative and non-blood relative. Now I cannot explain this medically, but it is holding true in about 90% of case histories that have been looked at over the last 10 years. There are exceptions. For example, the American Medical Association came up with a startling st statistic. 10% of cancers are caused by mammograms. A few years ago, published medical reports stopped recommending mammograms, but they did not tell you why. They knew that the radiation from mammograms was causing breast cancer and it has been for years. The women who get cancer from mammograms are those that are genetically predisposed to breast cancer. Remember I spoke about anti-oncogenes earlier. They protect body cells from developing cancer. Normally there are two anti-oncogenes in each cell. There are three classes of cells in the human body. There are healthy cells which have two anti-oncogenes present. These cells will never become cancerous. You cannot develop cancer when both anti-oncogenes are present. Then the second type of cell is those that are genetically predisposed because they only have one anti-oncogene present. When these women have a mammogram, the radiation destroys the only anti-oncogene that is there. So there is now no anti-oncogenes in that cell. So now that cell is transformed into the third type of cell, which is a compromised cell, which has the potential to become cancerous and at any time because it has no anti-oncogenes. 10% of women are genetically predisposed to cancer, and that is why 10% of breast cancers are caused by mammograms. So does that mean that you should never have a mammogram? Well, my advice is this. First, go to an oncologist and have your genes tested, especially if there is a history of breast cancer in your family. If your cells are predisposed, in other words, they only have one anti-oncogene, then you must not have a mammogram, regardless of how safe they tell you it is. The amount of radiation that you are exposed to during a mammogram also depends on the technician. A unit of radiation is called a rad. And the maximum amount of radiation that breast tissue should ever be exposed to in a lifetime is about 100 rads. A normal mammogram can expose you to anywhere between 0.5 and 48 rads depending on the technician. So that relates to 10% of breast cancer that is genetically inherited. There are also other contributing factors and more rare causes of breast cancer which I've mentioned in my book. 
But let's come back to the other 90% that are related to bitterness between the woman with breast cancer and another woman. Here is a testimony um, by Pastor Henry Wright in his experience with breast cancer. When I was teaching in Whitcliffe, North Carolina, a lady was in the audience who had lumps in both her breasts. She heard my teaching on cancer in that conference. I was teaching for three days, but she did not come to me. She never said a word to me. I never even spoke to her or prayed for her. But she went home from that conference thoroughly convicted. She had simmering bitterness against her mother and her mother-in-law. She went to her prayer closet and began to repent to God for bitterness against her mother. Then in her mind these words formed. You need to not just repent, you need to go to your mother and make it right. So she made an appointment with her mother and admitted this long-term bitterness, irritation and resentment. And she made her peace with her mother. When she was rechecked by her doctor, all lumps were gone, but in her left breast only. So she went back into her prayer closet and said, God, why only one breast? Again, in her mind, these words formed. You've only done half the work. What about your mother-in-law? Whoopsie daisy. So then she made an appointment with her mother-in-law. When she was rechecked by her doctor, all lumps had disappeared in the right breast as well. This was over ten years ago, and she is still well today. No one prayed for her. Sometimes it is not necessarily prayer we need, but getting right with God, ourselves and our brother, is what we need. Now I've told you something that is very, very important. Ladies, it is vitally important that you make peace with all other females immediately, because you have an important medical need to. Well, what if they won't make peace with me? Well, it's not what they do, it's what you do. Somebody has to get spiritual here. Who do you think it needs to be? I've decided that I'm not going to die prematurely because of other people's sin. In other words, I am not going to allow cancer to take me out prematurely because I am bitter about the wrong that somebody else did to me. I refuse to take other people's sin into my life any longer. I have decided to forgive all sins of all people all of the time. I don't care what you say or what you do to me or what you don't do to me. I'm going to forgive you and that makes me a doer of the word. Now if you have a breach in relationship between you and another woman, does that 100% guarantee that you're going to get breast cancer? No. But it's like this. Say if I got drunk every night and I drove home drunk. It doesn't 100% guarantee that I'm going to have a, a car accident, but I significantly increase my chances. And it's the same principle with regards to putting yourself at risk of breast, breast cancer when you have a breach in relationship because of unforgiveness in your heart. The diseases that I am talking about in this session have to do with separation from others, which involves a breakdown in relationships and the fear, anger, rage, resentment, unforgiveness and bitterness that comes from that. I've mentioned a few principles that relate to cancer in general and I went into detail about breast cancer just to show you one example. But I've written about other specific types of cancer in my book and you can go and read more about it there if you are interested. Women who have breast or ovarian cysts or systolic acne have great bitterness, anger and deep resentment towards their mothers. There is unresolved issues that have led to a breakup in relationship between the girl with the condition and her mother and there is no fellowship between them. This is similar to the spiritual root of breast cancer and in fact although most breast cysts are often benign it can be a precursor to breast cancer. So if you want to get healed of breast cysts, ovarian cysts or systolic acne 
and close the door to the possibility of breast cancer in your life, you have got to forgive your mother and get that bitterness resolved in your heart before God. And if possible, restore your relationship with your mother. As well as forgiving others, you may also need to forgive yourself. Unforgiveness towards yourself can also lead to diseases, for example osteoarthritis, which affects the joints. When it comes to healing, forgiveness is a vital necessity, and I'm going to be speaking more about that in session 18. Healing is without a doubt a promise in God's word, but as with all His promises, there comes a condition. You don't get your healing by stomping into God's throne room and making demands. You have got to be prepared to meet His conditions first. According to 1 John 4, when we, when we become separated from each other, we become separated from God too. We cannot have fellowship with God and not have fellowship with our brother. We cannot say that we love God while we have jealousy, envy, hatred, anger, rage, resentment, bitterness and unforgiveness towards our brother. And you are the God.